Hi everyone, today we are on the C series in our genetics, and that would be the color series. So, we're going to go through that today. This is one of the more difficult ones to understand, um, but as we keep going, the next one we're going to cover is E, and once you figure that out, we will start making our pen, uh, Punnett squares using all of them and then you'll be able to get that visual that's going to make it much easier for you so the c series is not determining your color you've already done a and b and and you're figuring out all of your colors and this is going to tell you how and where the color is going to show on the rabbit e which is our next one, that's for extension. That's going to be how the color um, pattern is basically what it is. So right now, we're focused on the C, the color series, for how and where this color is going to be expressed. Another thing that's going to make this one a little bit more difficult to understand is because in this series of genes, there is incomplete dominance. I'm going to get into that in a minute, but that I make a note about incomplete dominance because we have not covered that yet. Also, there's more variations of this gene than any of the other genes. So that is going to be difficult. I will be popping up on the screen as we go through how to write these out, whether it is a dominant C or a CHD or a CHL, things like that, so that you can see how it would splay out for when you were going to write it out. So, we're going to go in order of dominance, and that is going to be our capital C first. That is going to be your full color. The example of that is going to be your black, orange, chestnut, um, lilac, those blues. Those are going to be your full color. So, when I took you out and I showed you Anastasia and Drizella, and those are my New Zealand blues, you know that those are a full color easy enough possibly um, and then from there you have um, CHD which is your chinchilla and it's actually chinchilla dark is how that is and then you have a um, CHL and that would be your chinchilla light and then you're gonna have a CH which is your Himalayan and a C that is lowercase recessive and that would be the absence of color that would be your white rabbits, like outside flounder is white. Now, we're going to dive into what each one of those are individually. So, let's go. Full color, capital C, pop it up here. That is the most dominant. If it is present, it will present. It will be expressed plain and simple. If it is there, it is there. The five ways that that can be expressed, I made a note so I wouldn't mess up, but I'm going to pop up on the screen as I read them, each way that it would read so that you have a visual. If it, the C is present, the full color capital C is present, it is going to reside over every other thing that I just listed. Um, your C, your CHD, your CHL, all those, C is going to take it. So I'm going to read the five, and then I'm going to pop them up here, and then I want you to be able to write them down so that you can see the order of how that would be. So, C dash C. That would be full color to full color. Just like that. And you would have capital C to C, C, H, D, and then that was going to be your full color over your chinchilla dark then you're gonna have a C to CHL and then that is going to be your full color over your chinchilla light and then you would have a C CH that'd be your fourth one and that's gonna be your full color over your Himalayan and then you would have a C over a lowercase C and then that would be your full color over your recessive absence of color that's pretty much it for that that is the simple one 
these uh, next couple, that's what it gets a little confusing. Um, CHD for Chinchilla. Let's go there. Chinchilla Dark is going to present over everything that is lacking a dominant C when it is present. Because that is the next most dominant in the color series of this. So, your best chinchilla it, coloring, if you were going to breed it this way and you wanted to get your prime, you would need to be breeding your chinchilla dark, your CHD, to a CHD to get that. Or you need to put it over something recessive. So, you would have your dominant CHD and then you would pair it with a red-eyed uh, red white to pull that color out. A CH, which would be the Himalayan. That's going to pull that out really intensely for you if you were going to breed it that way. When the chinchilla dark is dominant, it is going to present as smoke and pearl. That is because it's going to pull out the yellow pigment. Sorry about that. My phone is overheating, so I'm having some issues here. Huh, chaos. For example, orange is a full color. That is a capital C. Okay. The difference between that and the chinchilla pulling that out is going to be, that's going to create ermine. Ermine is frosty. Once the yellow is taken out, only pearl is left. Okay. So, pretty easy. I'm sure everybody's following along with me thus far, but now we are on CHL. This is our chinchilla light, and this is our incomplete dominance gene. This is your sable gene. So, for example, the other genes, when they get doubled, they express. So, for example, we learned in Agouti, AA is going to be an Agouti rabbit. Capital BB is going to be a black rabbit. Lowercase BB is going to be a brown slash chocolate rabbit. We know that. However, if you were to double the CHL, that sable gene, you're actually going to get seal as your color. Sable removes yellow and suppresses your dark coloration. That gives seal its own color family. This is going to be different than shaded rabbits. We will get into that, but it is different than a shaded rabbit. Sable is either going to be your, your C, CHL-CH, or it's going to be your C, CHL-C. That's the only way that that's going to be able to present. Then we're going to come to CH, and those are going to be your, um, that means your Himalayan. So that's going to give you that dark coloration on the ears, the nose muzzle, and the feet. The rest is going to have absence of color. The eyes and the body. These are often called pointed whites. And another example of this coloring that you can, another example of this coloring you can see would be in the Californians, how they only have color on certain points of their body. Then that's going to bring us to our recessive, which is going to be our lowercase cc, and that is going to be your red-eyed whites, also known as your ruby-eyed whites, and that is going to be your full absence of color. This is not going to include your E-series, but there are 24 variations of red-slash-ruby-eyed whites. We can get into that more after we get these main series done. We can dive into the fun little things and learn and expand more on that. Blue eyes is completely different from the red-eyed whites, and that was the Vienna that we spoke about previously and that we would be getting into more so as we work on our Punnett squares and getting everything written down and together. That is about all there is on the red-eyed whites. It is just that is lack thereof. If you were to take a red-eyed white and pair it with... A full C then you would get your full C you would need to have two recessive CC um, carriers so that you could get that red-eyed white back to back together so thank you guys for sticking around with me I appreciate it that was the C series it is a little difficult because we had 
multiple variations. We've got some exceptions. You heard me mention ermine, which you hadn't heard before. Um, a lot of our abbreviations are different. And we've discussed incomplete dominance. So in our next video, we're going to cover the E series. And then we are going to start making rabbits. We're going to start piecing these together so we know exactly what that looks like in a hands-on situation together. So thank you very much. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. And I will see you on the next video. Bye.